In this video, we're going to discuss how to find global or absolute maximum or minimum function value in an interval, which is not necessarily a closed interval. Let's get started. Here are the two methods that we're going to use in finding absolute or global extrema of a function in a given interval. These are actually the same test that we use in finding local or relative extrema. But in our conclusion, we now have absolute minimum or absolute maximum. But in this case, we need to satisfy an additional assumption in order for our conclusion to be an absolute extremum instead of a local extremum. So what is that additional condition? So here's the assumption for the following two tests. So first, suppose we have a function that is continuous on an interval i and that this function f has exactly one critical number in the interior of i. So when we say interior of the interval, it is just the interval i excluding its finite endpoints, if there are any. So for example, if you have the closed interval, let's say negative 5 to 3, then the interior of this, we just exclude the endpoint. So we consider the open interval negative 5 to 3. So this is the interior of that interval, the closed interval, negative 5 to 3. And here we're going to denote the left and right endpoints of the interval by A and B respectively. So for example, when we apply first derivative test, so let's say that the interior of the interval i is this open interval AB. So suppose that we have uh, finite endpoints. Okay. So if there is only one critical number in that interior, so let's say it's equal to C, and the sign of the derivative changes from negative to positive at C, which means that the function f is decreasing on the left of C and increasing on the right of C, then we can conclude that we have an absolute minimum at x equals C. Why is it an absolute minimum? Because we only have one critical number in the interior of that interval i. Second case, if the sign of the derivative changes from positive to negative at C, which means that the function f is increasing on the left and decreasing on the right of C, so therefore we can conclude that the function f has an absolute maximum at x equals C. But if the derivative does not change sign at C, so from positive to positive or negative to negative, then the function has neither an absolute mean nor an absolute maximum value at C. We can also use second derivative test to find absolute or global extrema. But again, we need to satisfy the condition that this function f here has exactly one critical number in the interior of the given interval. And if we satisfy this one and perform second derivative test, again, we can only apply second derivative test if the value of the derivative at the critical number is equal to zero, which means that the tangent line at the critical number is horizontal. So now when we look at the concavity, so if the second derivative at that critical number is negative, which means that the graph is concave downward, then we can conclude that the function has an absolute maximum at x equals c. But if the second derivative is positive at that critical number, which means that the graph is concave up, at that critical number, then we can conclude that the function f has an absolute minimum value at c. Let's have some examples. 
let's find any absolute or global extremum of uh, the following function on the open interval 0 to 10. First, we find the derivative of this function because we want to find the critical numbers of this function in this open interval 0 to 10. So the derivative of this is equal to 1 third times 3x squared, so that is x squared, and then minus 22x, and then plus 40 plus 0, so that is just plus 40. Note that this derivative always exists because it's a polynomial, so to find the critical numbers, we just have to find the x values where this derivative is equal to 0. And we can easily find those values if we factor out this uh, expression. So by factoring this uh, trinomial, we get x minus 2 times x minus 20. Therefore, the derivative is equal to 0 when x minus 2 is 0, that is when x is equal to 2, or when x minus 20 is 0, so that is when x is equal to 20. But since we're looking for critical numbers in this uh, interval here, 0 to 10, so the only critical number of the function is x equals 2. Therefore, we found exactly one critical number in the open interval 0, 10. So if this critical number gives us a minimum or a maximum, we are sure that it is an absolute maximum or an absolute minimum. So now to determine whether this critical number gives a minimum or maximum, we use first derivative test or second derivative test. But let's use first derivative test for this example. So we draw this sign chart for the derivative of the function f. And keep in mind that we are considering only this interval. So therefore, it's enough to determine the sign between 0 and 10. So our critical number is 2 in this interval. And to find the sign of the derivative, just take a test value. So for example, when x is equal to 3, plug in the 3 here, you'll get a 3 minus 2 times 3 minus 20. So that is positive times negative. You'll get a negative sign for the derivative. And to find the sign of the derivative in this interval, just choose a test value, let's say 1. So when x is equal to 1, plug it here. So you'll get 1 minus 2 times 1 minus 20. So that is negative times negative. You'll get a positive sign for the derivative. So therefore, the function f is increasing on the left and decreasing on the right. So by first derivative test, we have a maximum at x equals 2. What is that maximum value? So just plug in 2 into your function f and you'll get a value which is equal to 266 over 3. Now, what kind of maximum do we have here? Is it a local maximum or a global maximum? Since there is only one critical number of f in the open interval 0 to 10, it follows that this maximum is an absolute maximum. So therefore, 266 over 3 is the absolute maximum value of f which occurs at x equals 2. And in this case, the function has no absolute minimum in the open interval 0 to 10. If the given interval were a closed interval 0 to 10, then we can also find an absolute minimum by extreme value theorem. And we can find that one by finding the function values at the endpoints 0 and 10. And the minimum of those two values will be our absolute minimum. But since uh, the given interval is an open interval, in this case, we don't have an absolute minimum. Next problem. Let's find uh, any absolute or global extremum of the following function on the interval 0 to infinity. This time, let's use second derivative test instead of first derivative test. 
So again, we first find the critical numbers. And in order to find the critical numbers, we need to compute for the derivative. So we can easily compute for the derivative by writing this uh, fraction here as 75x raised to negative 1. And then now we take the derivative. So the derivative of 3x is a 3. And the derivative of this one is negative 75x raised to negative 2. And we can write this uh, term into this uh, fraction here. 75 over x squared and combining into a single fraction will get 3x squared minus 75 all over x squared. The derivative does not exist when x is equal to 0, but that is not a critical number because it is not an element of the domain of f. And we're not also interested with that number because we're considering the open interval 0 to infinity. So to find the critical numbers in this interval, we just equate the derivative to 0. And we'll get here the numerator equal to 0. And then moving the negative 75 to the right-hand side, you have here 3x squared equals 75. Dividing both sides by 3, you'll get x squared equals 25. And taking square root of both sides, don't forget the plus minus sign on one side. So we get x equals plus or minus square root of 25. So that is plus minus 5. Now, which number is in the open interval 0 to infinity? only the number x equals 5. So here we found again exactly one critical number in the given interval. So therefore, if we have a relative extreme value at this critical number, then that relative or local extreme value will be an absolute or global extreme value. So to determine whether this gives us again maximum or minimum, we're going to use either first derivative test or second derivative test. But this time, let's use second derivative test. So we can easily compute the second derivative using this expression here, and we'll get uh, second derivative equal to 150 x raised to negative 3, which is equal to 150 over x cubed. So now let's determine the sign of the second derivative at this critical number. Because the second derivative at 5 is positive. So when you plug in 5 here, you'll get a positive number, which means that at x equals 5, the tangent line is horizontal and it is concave up. The graph is concave up. Therefore, by the second derivative test, we have a minimum at x equals 5. So what is that minimum? The minimum is 3 times 5, that is 15, plus 75 over 5, so that is also 15. So that is f of 5 equal to 30. Lastly, we conclude that this minimum is an absolute minimum of f. Why? Because again, x equals 5 is the only critical number of the function in the interval 0 to infinity. So this absolute minimum of f, which is equal to 30, occurs at x equals 5. And again, since the given interval is an open interval, the function f doesn't have an absolute maximum. Now, here are some practice problems for you. So I want you to find the global or absolute minimum or maximum value of the function on its domain or on the given interval. So for this first function here, I want you to find the absolute minimum or absolute maximum in its domain, which is negative infinity to infinity. So that is the set of all real numbers. But for these uh, two functions here, find the absolute max or absolute mean on these given intervals. And if you'd like me to check your answers, please write your answers in the comment section below.